Hello, my name is Dan Voth, and I'm an assistant professor at the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences in the Department of Microbiology and Immunology. Here at UAMS, I teach medical students and graduate students, and also serve as co-director of our department's graduate program. However, most of my time at UAMS is spent in an NIH-funded research lab studying a highly infectious bacterial pathogen termed Coxiella burnetti. Coxiella is the causative agent of a disease called Q fever in humans, and while you may not have heard much about Q fever, it is somewhat rare in the U.S. It, it does cause outbreaks throughout the world, and we may not appreciate how common this disease is due to underdiagnosis and misdiagnosis. Now in humans, we would inhale the organism to become infected, and humans typically suffer from flu-like symptoms, including high fever for a prolonged period of time, and sometimes pneumonia. However, Q fever can also present as endocarditis, which is a very serious heart condition and can be fatal if left untreated, and is actually quite difficult to treat. Livestock are a common source of Coxiella, and livestock workers are at increased risk for this disease because livestock serve as large reservoirs for the, for the pathogen and can release many Coxiella into the environment, particularly during the birthing process. Now, even though Coxiella was discovered as the causative agent of Q fever in the mid-1930s, we still do not understand how the pathogen causes disease in very much detail. And so, in my lab, what we study is how this, this interaction occurs with humans. Now, although Coxiella can be found in many places in the environment and throughout the world, it must find a human cell in which to grow. And because humans inhale the organism, Coxiella initially targets macrophage cells in the human lung, termed alveolar macrophages. Now macrophages are the immune system's big eaters, and their responsibility is to engulf bacterial pathogens and destroy these bacteria in a compartment termed a lysosome. Most bacteria are destroyed in this very hostile environment. However, Coxiella is quite unique in that it is the only bacterial pathogen that actually prefers this environment and thrives there inside macrophages while it grows to high numbers. And to do this, Coxiella must form a very large vacuole in these cells in which to grow. In my lab, we spend our time studying this infection process at the cellular level. And because we do this because Coxiella's ability to infect macrophages and grow within these cells is central to its ability to cause Q fever. We now collaborate with Dr. Richard Curtin at Arkansas Children's Hospital Research Institute to study primary human alveolar macrophages directly from human lungs. And we use these cells to study both sides of the infection equation. First, we are studying human proteins, termed kinases, inside these macrophages that are very versatile signaling proteins that Coxiella uses in order to sustain survival of its host cell and also to promote formation of this large vacuole that it needs to grow. On the other side of the equation we are studying and characterizing Coxiella proteins that are injected directly into the host macrophage that control a variety of different infection events. So we are not really classical microbiologists in the true sense in my lab, but rather cell biologists that use a variety of microscopy techniques to study a very interesting microbe and its interaction with host cells. We use a variety of biochemical and cell biology techniques and a large amount of microscopy. And we use microscopy to monitor coxial infection of macrophages and growth within these cells in order to characterize bacterial proteins and the host proteins needed for infection. And our long-term goal in our lab is to not only better understand Coxiella's interaction with macrophages as a determinant of causing Q fever, but also to, along the way, identify bacterial and host proteins that could one day be used as therapeutic targets for new Q fever treatments. Thank you for taking time to listen to our research interests in the Q fever laboratory at UAMS.